This week, we take you behind the scenes of a Gulls broadcast. Vinny Letary shares his story and lets us listen in on his ice time. Yeah, I got you, Ace. I got you, I got you. Plus, some hockey lingo, rookie rapid fire, and plenty more on the latest edition of Gulls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union. Welcome to Gulls All Access presented by California Coast Credit Union. My name is Andy Zilch with BJ McPherson on another Zoom interview as we recap the regular season. Only a few more games left, but BJ, as we look back at that season, you crammed a lot of games in a short period of time. How do you think the Gulls handled this? Well, for such a season like we've had this year, so many games, short period of time, Players have to play more, having the taxi squad a little different in the NHL, the amount of players up and down. I think the young guys did great for the team. Players like Bo Grew, Lamoche, Kindop, these were a couple surprise players. So throughout this season, I think the Gulls had a lot of bright spots. Well, we had 44 games in three and a half months. And just in terms of a performance standpoint, the Gulls rose to the top of the Pacific Division. And they stayed there for all of the season. How do you think the team overall performed during the course of the year? Well, I think the system of the organization really helped a lot of young guys mesh with a lot of the older guys. When you can get veteran guys and younger guys meshing together, that brings everything a lot easier. And the system, the type of system the organization plays, when everybody gets on at 20 players deep, they're able to make things happen. But then again, a system is only as good as you getting those 20 guys to take action. A big focal point of this season was development, and that was obvious for every year in the AHL, but more specifically for this year. And that can be talking about players that come in as rookies, three-year guys, or veterans. So in your mindset, how do you think the development worked out for this club? When you talk about development, you look to a couple first-rounders, Jamie Drysdale, Trevor Zegras. These are players that started the year out in the American Hockey League, but look now, they've played 10 plus games in the NHL. And you go with players like Perot, who's an 18 year old, who should be in the Quebec Major Junior League. But this year being a little different for junior, these players were allowed to play in the American League. And then you look at guys that, it's not their first year. You know, you look at Chase DeLeo, the way he really put his mind to it in the off season, really hit the weights and did everything you need to do I think players like that really set themselves apart, and I think that's what it takes to put yourself in the higher echelon. Well, and the final question to pose to you, and one thing of growth for anybody, and that's pro hockey players or humans individually, is adversity. The club had some strong adversity a few weeks ago when he had numerous players up with the Anaheim Ducks, and players that normally wouldn't get playing time were able to capture that playing time. There's been adversity all throughout the year, and obviously the COVID-19 pandemic has posed that to this club. But adversity certainly shows that this team can be something that they can overcome as well, right? Well, it's great to have adversity. That's where, again, you see the true colors of a person, especially a hockey player. Guys get called up for the taxi squad, guys getting up in the NHL. It's been a totally different year in pro hockey, and I think a lot of the Gulls players have really made the best of it. The whole organization, I think, has done a great job going through such a wacky season. Well, BJ McPherson, we appreciate your time. And again, next week, you and I will talk about the postseason. So thank you. Thanks very much, Andy. Looking forward to the postseason. The Anaheim Ducks season may have concluded, but that doesn't mean we're done talking about San Diego Gulls players who have made their way to the NHL. Today we begin speaking about the third year defenseman Simon Benoit who made his NHL debut against the LA Kings on April 28th. Benoit finished the NHL season skating in six games, not registering a point, but he did play in over 15 minutes per game. 
The Gauls captain is another player to highlight who played in 13 NHL games and every single game to wind down the month of May with the Ducks. To Carrick who scores! What a play by Zegras, he read the reverse. Carrick finished the season with six points, a plus four rating, and 28 penalty minutes. Finally, we look at goaltender Anthony Stolarz, who looks to have the competitive edge to take over the backup position behind John Gibson. Stolarz finished the season with a 4-3-0 record, a 2.20 goals against average, and a 92.6 save percentage in eight appearances. Time now for a look behind the curtain. It takes a team of people to produce a Gauls broadcast. So this week, we take you from the TV truck to the broadcast booth for a look at all that goes into bringing you the Gulls on television. One. Trucks usually roll in about uh, you know six hours beforehand. They uh, park in power, which is uh, where everything gets, you know, make sure there's power to the from the, the building uh, generator. Make sure things are up and running. They usually have to unload the truck with uh, different crates that hold all the cameras, um, you know, tripods, everything that's out there. So the crew starts unloading all that stuff, moving it to different locations around the arena and uh, setting everything up. We have five man cameras, uh, eight all together. Um, because of our penalty boxes, we have two replay machines, well, two channels of replay, two channels of graphics and our score bug. So three channels of graphics technically. Um, 15 people about is the size of our crew. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of keeping everything organized chaos and keeping it all in front of us. Gauls moving around very swiftly. Galeo in front, jam shot, another one. Agazino, take two, blue. take two. Four. Ready, three. Two, three. Two, three. Take three. Take four, four. take four. four. Yeah, the, the handheld as well. Ready, Perfect. Red. red, blue. Affect the red. Roll red. 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 Next three, play we down low blue. We've got a whole truck outside, and these guys are the ones who really make the show run. Without them, BJ, Andy, myself, we can't do anything. And they're the guys who really, the men and women who really put the broadcast together. So during the broadcast, I'm listening to Andy and BJ call the game and watching it, but I'm also listening to our producers and they're telling us exactly what we're gonna do, the steps that we're gonna take. We're going to break, we're coming out of break, we've got an interview, we've got a feature piece. And so the people back in the truck are really the ones who make everything happen. The producer is the one who uh, who sets the tone of the show, tells us where we're going, when, and all that stuff. And it's my job to really make it as pretty as possible for them and uh, give them everything that they're asking for. And again, not miss any of the important action. Podorowski shoots and a save is made. Oh. Rebound poked away by Patera. You gotta like the way Podorowski uses his body to get that puck Ready towards the three. net. Andy and BJ are the best. You know, I mean, it always helps when you have talent that know the team, and both those guys know the team like the back of their hand. And, you know, I mean, Andy is, is great. He does a lot of work with the goals. Having a person like Andy being around the team, you know, players open up to him more. They're, they're, they know that he's not going to use something uh, out of context in what they say. BJ provides such awesome, you know, insight and, uh, to, you know, to all aspects of the game. And it's, it's wonderful to have both of them uh, do what they do and, uh, and, and let people in and explain the game and tell the people uh, what the, uh, you know, what's going on in the game. Success for me is a clean show, a good broadcast, an entertaining broadcast. Um, I don't want a ton of mistakes in something that, you know, whether the audience at home would notice it or not, if it's something that we know we could do better, we want to do it better. The most important thing is that, you know, we get to the viewers, we show the people that are, you know, Gulls fans and show people that are hockey fans, you know, what happened in this game. We're able to tell the story from beginning to end how this game went. I look at each game almost like the chapter of a book. You're, you're telling the chapter. It may not be, you know, the whole story of that book, but you're literally going along and saying, okay, well, this is why this game was important a couple weeks ago, because it led to this. This is why tonight's important, because we're gonna have a rematch with these guys next week. And as those games go along, and as that season goes along, everything kind of ties in at the end. Up next, we'll introduce you to forward Vinny Letary. And later, we'll have the young guys face some rapid fire questions as Gauls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union, continues. 
The best way to enjoy live games next season is through a Gulls Elite membership. New memberships are on sale now, and you can get all the information by visiting sandiegogulls.com slash Gulls Elite. Reserve your seats for the upcoming season today and receive free AHL TV access, discounted tickets, free parking, and more. Welcome back. Since joining the San Diego Gulls, forward Vinny Letary has posted over a point per game. I was able to catch up and get the side of the story from the Minnesota native, and he lets us in on the sights and sounds from the ice. Go, go, go. Middle, 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 middle. Straight, yeah, yeah. Hey, Doug, go left. Go, go. other time. Hey, I want you coming low, Pachi. I'm going to win it to Kersey. We'll go DD and hit you low. Go to the corner. D's going to pass it down to you. Look for me up top. Yeah, I got you, Eggs. I got you, I got you. Hit him, yeah. Hey, when he comes out like that, I'm over here. Fire to me right away. I'll stop right here and you drive, okay? Axe, axe! Hey, 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 hey! Hey, 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 hey! And you have an intriguing background, and we'll start with your parents, more specifically with your father. I'd love to hear his background and what you know on your vantage point from his soccer playing days and what you can tell our fans about him being a pro soccer player. Yeah, he was a soccer goaltender in his days. Um, he was playing for Team Canada in the World Cup, the Olympics. He played for the Strikers, um, a couple other teams, and um, interesting, obviously, Growing up with my family background, with my grandpa uh, playing for the North Stars as well, uh, player coach GM there, uh, my uncle playing hockey. Everyone was uh, a hockey in my family except my dad. Um, he obviously pushed for me to play soccer growing up, but my passion was uh, in hockey and he understands the game uh, as good as anyone does and his support through it all has been um, very, very helpful for me. When did you realize becoming a professional was a true goal and a true feasible goal too when you thought, all right, I can do this, I can make the NHL? Ever since I was a kid, it was just my, my dream to play in the NHL and it was never out of sight. I've had to handle a lot of adversity for every team I've gone on. I always start at the bottom, fourth line and moving up. You know, those coaches that you grew up with that said, you know what, you're maybe you're gonna be a little too small or you're not fast enough or you know you always have those doubters and just with my drive with my determination obviously um, God's a big part of my my day and he's allowed me to play in the NHL and and have a handful of games there and allowed me to play the game I love each and every single day so uh, pretty much my faith has been the biggest part ever since college into driving me to stay as an NHL player and to continue to grow as a person on and off the ice. Stopped by Nieves, he pulls up, feet across, SCORE! Vinny Letiri in his NHL debut gives the Rangers a 2-1 to -one lead. And there's the family on their feet, yes! What a moment! First NHL goal. Your first NHL game was on December 29th, 2017 at Detroit, and you scored. What do you remember from that evening and even that entire day? Actually, before that, we were on the plane. Uh, I think it was, it was Christmas break we were coming back from, and Stephen Fogarty and I are, were on the same flight. And uh, he always beats me to the news on what's going on around the hockey world. I always try to get ahead of him. But um, he turned on his phone when we were landing and he said, turn on your phone. And I said, why? He goes, uh, I think it was Kreider got hurt. He said, Kreider got hurt. And I said, he, he said, did you get a call or anything? And I literally turned on my phone and I got a call um, from my coach, uh, Keith McCambridge. And uh, he told me, he's like, hey, you're going up. And it was my first time that I got called up. And it was, I mean, I, I had the most amount of butterflies. I'm kind of getting the tingly feeling right now thinking about it, but it was, I couldn't believe it. And uh, warm-ups, to be honest, warm-ups is the most nerve-wracking thing in the world. <laughs> 
playing your first NHL game because you're like, you're so out of sync. You don't know what to do. You don't want to get in anyone's way. It's your first game. Um, and it was pretty, that was pretty much the toughest part of the game was the warmups. Uh, but after that, it took me, I think, one or two shifts to kind of feel more comfortable. And then I was lucky enough to get that pass from Booney Evis. Um, and it was pretty cool to have my family there and have them see that. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty crazy feeling. And I was pretty lucky to score my first shot, first game. What, what is so special about the Anaheim organization? What drew you to play here for the Ducks and the Gulls? The management here, uh, the way they spoke to me and the players here, it just seemed like a great fit for me to um, kind of change things up a little bit. Uh, I spent three years in New York and I had 40 something games in the NHL and I was not satisfied from that. The moment I stepped foot with the Gulls, I actually was so amazed at how good we were with how young we were. But I was very impressed with the guys on here, the young guys that have a lot of responsibility and they're handling it um, very well. And uh, up top, it's been, it's been great too. And I couldn't be more fortunate to have um, signed here and thanks to management and the guys for making it um, such a great year so far. Thanks to Vinny for taking the time. We turn our attention now to the rookies of the San Diego Gauls and the players that are fresh faces to the team that I've called all season long. We now go to the second round of Rookie Rapid Fire. So I actually grew up um, in Connecticut. Uh, my dad was a big hockey player. Um, his brother was a big hockey player. And his brother had, so I have five cousins that all played hockey. So I mean, it kind of just started like in the driveway, like uh, just playing with tennis ball and some street hockey. Ever since I was young, it was just all I loved to do. It was my first time this summer. Unbelievable. I go with the double patty. The double, I don't know what it's called, uh, but you go with the double patty, double cheese. <laughs> I like cheeseburgers, so I thought it was, I thought it was good. A homemade bacon, egg, and cheese with something on the uh, some some side would be would be ideal. My mom makes pretty good bacon, egg, and cheese. Um, I've actually never surfed. Um, I've, I've just rolled the waves with my body, like that kind of stuff, but I've never never got up on a surfboard, so maybe that's something I'll, I'll try in the future. Yeah, uh, I'm a pretty, pretty big video game guy. I mean, um, being away from my hometown and all my buddies back home, that's kind of the way I communicate and see what they're up to, so uh, I tend to play a lot of video games. What's your best game? Uh, right now, it's Call of Duty. I think that's playing Warzone and kind of that kind of stuff with my friends. That's, that's my go-to game right now. We like to go to the beach a lot and just hang out, uh, you know, enjoy the downtime, watch some Netflix. So, you know, keeping it pretty chill, especially with COVID going around. I'm not a great golf player, but um, me and my brothers and my sister, uh, my parents, we usually go and have fun at Top Golf, which is like a, kind of a shooting range where you, you have fun, you kind of just shoot the ball and, you know, just, just hang out. I love comedies, to be honest. Like, especially coming back from the ring from a hard practice. You don't want to watch a scary movie where you're all scared and now you can't sleep at night. I can cook, I can cook pretty well actually. I'm a very big fan of like uh, cooking and like uh, Gordon Ramsay, all those, uh, all those TV shows. He taught me a couple stuff uh, when I was back home. Coming up next, a very busy volunteer is doing all she can for San Diego's youth. And BJ teaches us a couple hockey terms, flamingo and seatbelt. We'll be right back. San Diego Gulls many plan deposits are now being accepted for next season. Save on tickets and choose the plan that best fits your schedule or build your own plan that includes your favorite Gulls matchups. For more information and to purchase your mini plan, visit sandiegogulls.com slash mini plans. Welcome back. To volunteer is already a noble act, but in terms of Janae Peavy, she gives everything she possibly can. That is why she is a Gulls hometown hero. Depending on the day will depend on the different organizations that I belong to, but currently I work for the San Diego County Office of Education. Those organizations include USA Track and Field, Skyline Youth Football and Cheer. I'm with the California Association of 
School Social Workers and the National Association of Social Workers. I want to make sure that our um, youth today understand um, how to be leaders, also to you know keep them as contributing members of our society and being positive leaders. And I believe that sports are, is a way that they can end up being positive leaders in the community. We're here to make sure that they're still academically successful as well. I never knew that my calling would be to be volunteering um, or to be act as active as I am in the community. So you never know where your path will lead. My kids still ask me to this day, Mom, why are you still there? Like, you, we're not even here anymore. But I really want to make sure that we are supporting our youth and especially in times like this. All we can do is make a difference one kid at a time or one day at a time. We thank Janae for brightening the present and futures of so many San Diego youngsters. Let's go back to BJ for his latest lesson on hockey lingo. Hockey lingo, the flamingo. This is something you don't want a coach to say, hey, you just went out there and flamingoed in front of that puck. What a flamingo is, when you go out to block a shot and you lift the one leg and you happen to look like that bird, the flamingo. The Gulls players make it look so easy, but trust me, blocking shots takes a lot more courage than people think. All right, seatbelt. What is seatbelt? Well, when two hockey players drop the gloves, again, it takes a lot of courage to drop the gloves, but sometimes when you have a fight in hockey, one guy's got a lot more of an edge than you. So to save yourself, you just really hold on with both hands, and that's what's considered the seatbelt. You're not throwing punches, you drop the gloves, but you really just held on until the fight ended. That's a seatbelt. Thanks, BJ. That'll do it for this edition of Gulls All Access. Be sure to tune in next week at 2.30 right here on Fox 5 as we recap the top moments of this past season. For the cast and crew, my name is Andy Zilch. Thanks for watching Gulls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union.